let's install git and make a python virtual environment. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you what happens if you don't have git. First of all, you don't have git bash. And if you try to do in the terminal a git clone, if you want to clone something from github, you're going to get this error. It says git is not recognized as a command. So we have to get git. So let's do that right now. I'm going to open up a web browser. I'm going to double click on Google Chrome. You could use something else if you wish. And now I'm going to type in the address bar, um, git. I'm going to press enter. And look at what we have here. There's a link that is from git-scm.com. And that's actually what we're looking for. I want to go to the downloads. I'm going to click on downloads here. And because I'm using a Windows, I'm going to click on download for Windows right here. And it says my download is starting. So it might take a while for your download if you have a bit of a slower internet connection like I do, but it shouldn't be too long. And I'm coming up on just a few seconds left. And now I'm going to open it when it is successfully finished. And once it opens, you'll get a UAC prompt. I'm going to hit yes. I'm fine with it making changes because it's a safe program. You might be asked for a password in that scenario if you have a school computer. So you have to talk to the IT department in that case. So here's the licensing information. It's GNU or, or new and which is awesome because this means um, it is open source. So it's an open source license, which is awesome because it means it's free. So once you understand that, let's click next. And I want it to be in that directory. It's cool. I have enough disk space. Make sure you have enough disk space. I'm going to hit next. And now you get uh, these options that it asks you. Um, I'm okay with these options. If you want an icon on the desktop, you can go ahead and click that for your convenience. I'm going to click next and I'm going to click next again. And now it's going to ask you a lot of random things. Um, like if you want a ubiquitous text editor, Ooh. sure. Let's click next. And this is going to ask you about deciding the initial branch in your GitHub repositories. I'm fine with this option, the default option. And I do want this uh, recommended option. I want to run git from the command line. So I'm going to leave it as it is, right? So let's hit next. And I want the open SSL library. I'm going to hit next. And I like this option, which will treat line endings in Windows style line endings, and it will commit Unix style, which is fine. Hit next. And I want the terminal emulator to be min TTY. I'm going to hit next. And I'm fine with the default git pull. I'll hit next. And I'm fine with the git credential manager core. We're hitting next a lot of times here. I'm going to hit next again. And I'm fine with the system caching. I'll hit next. And I don't want any experimental features. So let's hit next. Don't do I mean, actually, we're going to hit install this time. So and it will crunch away and we will wait for the green progress bar. And it shouldn't take too long to install Git. And once we have Git, we can actually clone repositories from the command line or git bash and we can commit and pull and push our github repositories so i don't want to see the release notes i'm just going to hit launch git bash and then i'm going to click on finish and there's your git bash and what's cool in the git bash is that you can make a virtual python environment which is great when you want to create a uh, a 
a sort of Python that is separate from your system Python in case anything goes wrong, then no system files will be irreparably damaged. So let's make a virtual environment. Uh, first of all, let's type which Python. Just to be sure that we have Python, you should already have Python. If you don't, I have a handy tutorial on how to get Python. You should look at it and press enter. And oh, it's telling me, look, we found a Python, Python 39, you know, and there it is. Um, you could also do Python dash dash version. Let's see what that gives us, right? We'll press enter. Make sure there's Python space dash dash version and you press enter. And I have 3.9.5. And it's not the latest version, but it'll be good for our uh, intents and purposes. How do we make a virtual environment? Let's get right to it. First, let's type in Python Da, uh, space dash m v e n v which stands for virtual environment right and now we're gonna do space tilde uh forward slash in all capital letters e n v three and then we're gonna hit enter and it's gonna uh, wait a little bit because it's doing something And once you see your username again, it tells you that it's basically done doing that command. So once you see the blinking cursor, you can type another command, right? So now let's do source space tilde forward slash in all capital letters env3 and let's type forward slash and let's do scripts with a capital S and then a forward slash and then we'll type activate and now let's press enter and this is awesome once you see in parentheses env3 it's letting you know that it is running inside of the virtual environment. So let's just for demonstration, Python space dash dash version, and it tells you your version. And it also says in parentheses env3, which is still indicating that we are within the virtual environment in this particular instance of git bash. So now you're probably thinking, all right, virtual environment, how do I get this in my code editor. I want it to be in my Visual Studio code. I want it to be in my PyCharm. I don't just want it to be in Git Bash. So let's actually make it within PyCharm or Visual Studio code. First of all, I'm going to do it in PyCharm. So I'm going to launch PyCharm. I have the professional version. Uh, you can actually get the professional version for free if you attend a, uh, a university. I have a tutorial for that. You can check it out if you'd like. And it tells me, welcome to PyCharm. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna open a new project. And I'm gonna make a new Python project, right? Um, if you're making a new one, it's going to ask you about your environment, right? It's gonna ask, would you like to make a new environment, a new virtual environment? Uh, you can typically make one on a project by project basis. Um, you can have a virtual environment for each individual project if you wish, or if you would like to make the virtual environment that you just created inside of the Git Bash, we can do a previously configured interpreter. And then we can click uh, in the three dots here and it will launch a, it will ask you, you know, virtual environment. And we can click uh, the three dots again and it will ask you, where is it located? And we made it in our C drive and our users directory in your username directory. And I made it in a folder and so should you in a folder called env3 and it's inside of scripts, right? I, I'm going to use this one. And we're going to use activate.bat and press OK. 
Oops, that's not good. I want python.exe actually. Python.exe, select python.exe and press OK. And there's your interpreter in the virtual environment that you just made. You can click OK. And look at that. It is good to go. You have successfully uh, configured the virtual environment for PyCharm. And we'll hit Create. And there you go. It's creating a project which will work within the confines of this virtual environment. And I don't want to see tip of the day. I'm going to click close. And look at this. Let's click on terminal, which is in the bottom of your PyCharm. And in the terminal, it should tell you ENV3. That's working within a virtual environment. So now you can install your modules. You can do pip install and hit any Python module that you wish, and it will install it within the virtual environment. So that is how you do it in PyCharm. How do you do it in Visual Studio Code? Let's see. Open up Visual Studio Code and press Control, Shift, and P at the same time. And let's type interpreter and let's go Python select interpreter. We'll click on that. And look what shows up here Python 3.9.5 ENV3. Let's click on that. And it should say ENV3. And now the thing is that if you want to run the virtual environment in VS Code and you want to, after you choose the interpreter of the virtual environment, you click on new terminal from terminal in the top left of the menus. And then you get this error message. Uh, the scripts cannot be loaded because running scripts is disabled, right? And there's a way to fix that. We can set the command prompt CMD as the default terminal instead of PowerShell, which will let us um, run virtual environment. Let's press Control Shift P and then type in open settings. Don't do open default settings, do open settings JSON. And here we're, we want to add something to this. We want to add terminal integrated shell windows. So let's go to the bottom and press enter. Make sure you don't do it after this curly brace on line 47. We're going to type in quotation marks, terminal, period, integrated, period, default, and then with a capital P, profile, and then period, windows, and then, oops, I spelled that wrong. And then after the quotation marks, you're going to put a colon, and we're going to type, oh look, it's right here. Click on that command prompt. Let's actually put a space after the colon. Oh, it actually expected a comma somewhere. Oh, oh hey, don't forget the comma on line 45. And then it'll make it look better, right? No underlined red lines, so it looks good. All right, and now we're going to do file and we're gonna hit save. And then we're gonna X out settings.json. Now let's try another terminal. Go to terminal and click new terminal. And look at that, ENV3. Now you can, with peace of mind, install pip modules and you are, you are sure that it is in a virtual environment because you can see it within the terminal on VS Code. It takes a little bit more hoops to jump through on VS Code as compared to PyCharm, but it is what it is. Congratulations. So that's how you use a virtual environment within VS Code. Congratulations, you have successfully configured Git and a virtual environment for Python.